bullet time. An awesome mechanic that not only looks and feels cool but is handy at helping the player make accurate shots and feel like a far superior shooter than their enemies. This mechanic is especially useful when the player is moving at the speed of light. Um, well, actually 15 million times less. But whatever, I'm gonna have to make it so the player feels like they're as fast as the flash. Hey, I'm Curly Fries and welcome to another mini development showcase where I share my method of developing a game mechanic for the current project I'm working on. Today's episode, I'll be continuing Project Eat the Rich, a sci-fi third-person shooter RPG. I've already prototyped a few mechanics for it on my channel, which you can watch in the playlist link below. Let's not dilly-dally any longer, super speed, let's go! To help test the super speed and bullet time mechanics, I'm going to add a basic turret to the scene. I visit Firebase, a subscription service with thousands of 3D game assets to download a turret model, then program its basic AI. I should do a thorough video about creating a turret AI down the road, so I won't go into too much detail. The turret is set up with a trigger sphere collider. When the player enters it, the turret rotates to face them and while rotating does a spear cast. If it hits the player it begins firing in its forward direction. The turret setup is time to begin super speed. However, as Mars has three speeds, walking, running and super speed, it felt unorthodox to create a third input for super speed. Most games have one button to increase the speed of whatever you're controlling. So I concluded that Mars default speed will change when in and out of combat. Therefore, I must add a ball for when Mars is in combat. As my project uses the state pattern, I begin by creating a script for player combat state. Inside the player state machine, I rename move speed to be default move speed use outside combat and define new combat speed variables in combat move speed and super speed the player combat state is simply a copy and paste of the default state except the speed variables used in the move method are the ones for combat now i need to add functionality on how to switch between these states in the player base state a script that all player states inherit i create a new method called revert to default or combat state if the ball in combat is true switch to the combat state else revert to the default state in my other states i replace the line which switches to the default state with a call to this newly created method. In player combat state, I add a new method called has combat ended, which switches to the default state if in combat is false and calls this method in its update state. Player default state has the opposite method of has combat begun. Its method is also called in its update state. I'm not yet at the stage where I can programmatically set in combat to true as I require an enemy AI for that. For now, I will manually set in combat to true via the inspector for testing purposes. The super speed value is something to tinker with during play testing. When I get to the polish phase I can make this look better with VFX, post-processing and screen effects but I'll save that for a later video. Admittedly it's rather difficult to aim while moving at the combat speed. To fix this inside the player combat state I introduce a get move speed method that returns a speed based on certain conditions. If the speed button is held down return the super speed else if aiming return the default move speed otherwise return the in combat move speed. Finally I update the move method and set the target speed to be whatever the method returns. Obviously this is busted as hell if the player can constantly move at super speed. I must add a limitation making super speed temporary and once exhausted a cooldown occurs. To achieve this I create a super speed controller script and attach it to the player. Firstly I establish some variables. Speed boost complete depletion time. The time you can use super speed from its max value to zero. Speed boost complete regeneration time. The time taken for super speed to regenerate from zero to maximum. Speed boost current value which is initially set to one the maximum value. And last cooling down. Next I create the dash method which takes a ball of can dash as the external factors to consider when deciding to dash. If can dash and the super speed is not cooling down, I set the speed boost current value to this where time.delta time divided by the speed boost complete depletion time gives you the value to reduce the speed boost current value by if you want it to go from max to zero within this specified time. Then I clamp the current value to never go below zero. If the value hits zero, cooling down is set to true. Else, if can't dash, meaning it's cooling down or the player is no longer holding the button, the super speed regenerates which is just the opposite of what occurs in the if block except I divide time.delta time by the speed boost complete regeneration time. To aid in deciding when can dash, I create a public method is speed boost available which simply returns true when not cooling down back in the player base state i use this method's return value as a condition when determining can dash which returns true if the sprint button is held down the speed boost is not cooling down the player is in combat and the player is actually moving by pressing either the w a s or d keys 
I hope they might get move speed method to call can dash to change the player speed to super speed when relevant. But to actually deplete the super speed meter, I call the super speed controller's dash method in combat state's update state and pass can dash as an argument. To help visualize this, I throw together some basic UI which is only displayed when speed boost current value is changing. I will do an in-depth video of UI in the future, so if you're interested, be sure to subscribe. It's bullet time baby. I begin by creating a bullet time script and once again attached to the player. Inside the input actions window, I define a new input for bullet time or focus as it'll be called in this game. For now, I set it to be the space key on keyboard and R3 on controller. On the focus action, I add an interaction of hold. The action is only considered performed when the corresponding input has been held for this period. I decided that bullet time can only occur when the player is aiming. So it makes sense for the aim controller to contact the bullet time script at the aim controller is only enabled when aiming. In the aim controller, I create an input method called on focus. When the button is held down and the player's arm, I set a ball called activate focus to true. When the button is released, set to false. And if you're wondering why I've added this line, it's because I've subscribed the method to the player input on action triggered event, which is called when any button is pressed. So I must ensure the triggered action's name is focused before executing the code. This fire delay coroutine is called an on enable. Check out my aiming and shooting bit if you're curious as to why this delay is necessary. Anyway, in on disable, the method unsubscribes from the event so that when the aim controller is disabled, on focus is no longer caught as bullet time should only occur while aiming. Inside bullet time, I add an update method then paste the contents of the dash method inside then update the variable names. It's in update because the aim controller only calls its update method when enabled. But even when not aiming, the bullet time meter still needs to regenerate so the logic goes in update. With the variables renamed, I begin adding the logic to slow down time. When the bullet time button is held and it's not cooling down, then the time.timescale is set to a bullet time scale variable set in the inspector. Time.timescale is described as the scale at which time passes. I can edit this to slow down or even fasten the speed of my game. In here, I revert the time scale to the default value of 1. Outside the if statement, I update the time.fixed delta time to be the default fixed delta time, a variable I set in start, and multiply it by the time.time scale. Unity recommends that you also update this when modifying the time scale because fixed delta time, also known as time step in editor, is used by physics and fixed update. If you want physics to move in slow mode too, you must modify this value. But wait, notice how the super speed meter depletes slower during bullet time. That's because this is also being affected by the time scale. Though I don't want things like time is being affected by this, which is why I must update time.delta time to be time.onscale delta time, as the name implies is delta time unaffected by time scale. I made these changes both the bullet time and super speed controller script. Also, I need to add cooling down to the else if condition, as I want the time scale to return to normal if bullet time is on cooldown. I create a focus method which simply sets enable focus to the ball passed as an argument. Back in aim controller, I call this method an update pass and activate focus as the argument. And on disable, I reset activate focus to false and again call the method with the same argument so that bullet time is automatically disabled when aiming is cancelled. Before testing, I find my main camera and tick ignore time scale so that the camera moves at normal speed even when the game is slowed down by a bullet time. Otherwise, aiming would be in slow motion. Once again, I add some basic UI to visualize the bullet time meter. After some playtesting, I decide to add an auto-focus feature, so when the player aims during super speed, bullet time is automatically enabled, as I can't imagine any player accurately hitting their target moving at super speed, unless there's some kind of TPS deity. That means the bullet time script needs to know when the player is dashing. In bullet time, I create a method called setIsDashing, which sets its own isDashing variable to the value passed as an argument. Inside the dash method, when the player is dashing, it calls the method and passes true. When not dashing, it passes false. Back again in bullet time i update the if condition to this one of these two conditions must be true either focus is enabled or the player is dashing and is aiming and this must always be true is aiming is set by the focus method's newly added second parameter and because there's a slight delay between the aim button being held and mars actually aiming is aiming is only true when aiming reticle is shown because that is activated once the delay is complete Finally, I set up the scene, add more turrets, create super speed animation, then begin the ultimate test. And that's super speed and bullet time. But let's talk improvements. As I already said, obviously VFX and post-processing will make these mechanics feel much better. But it's too early to add those because I'm not even sure about these mechanics. The bullet time is a cool addition. That's definitely going to stay as Mars is a super agent with cybernetic enhancements. He has a focus feature built into his internal OS. However, the super speed. I honestly don't know yet. I will say it feels good when combined with the bullet time. However, I'll need some enemies to get a better feel of this mechanic to conclude whether it's a good fit to the gameplay. 
playing. And that's what I'll be doing in the next video. So if you enjoyed this video and want more of this content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I encourage you to leave your feedback in the comments and this will help me to make better content for you wonderful people. As always, thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves and have a super day. Curly Fries, logging out.